like to say to all of you today that nobody should work here, ever. Our managers will make promises and never keep them, and not only that, they will preach to us about how they care about their employees. But about a month ago, my boss, assistant manager Cora, called me a waste of time and management did nothing to help. Oh, Cora! Management will also try and save money every step of the way, including cutting benefits of a part or a full-time associate down to part down to part time, even though he worked forty plus hours a week. Jesus Christ! I've been a loyal employee here for over a year and a half, and I'm sick of all the bullshit, bogus write-ups, and my job. <laughs> and you hear people clapping in the background amazing i fucking love it <laughs> oh you gotta love it but that but that always that that's 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 the, that's the kind of that's the that's the um the sad thing about entry-level jobs for the most part they're quite fun right you meet some interesting people you meet some really cool people some people that you kind of gonna have friendships with for the rest of your life you kind of meet people that are going to leave a, a permanent imprint in your life right they're going to change you in ways that you've kind of never even imagined would happen you meet some amazing people but um over time because of just the, the because of the um, transient nature of the job it just there's such a high turnover of staff that eventually what what made it fun kind of stops being fun anymore because the people change because that's that's part of the reason why the jobs are good those entry-level jobs not because you're working not not because working in walmart is you know you know is gonna excite you or thrill you the thing that makes working at walmart great especially working a night shift or whatever it may be is that night shift team is fucking amazing you work with some great people um it's, it's jokes on end it's always banter there's always some sort of crazy thing that happens it's amazing but then the moment as the years as the months progress and the years go on people start to leave people get families things change management changes and usually the management things the one that fucks it up when a new manager comes in and you know you can't you know you can't begrudge them for when to come in and kind of put their stamp on a team but they make little changes they fuck things up a little bit and they just suck the living fun out of any job that you had that was fun previously and it's absolutely like it's one of the things that kind of drives me nuts like the the, the human um desire to come in and kind of tweak things and just you know want to piss all over stuff and leave your mark on it like just just continue the good work that's already there i never understood that idea that you know it's like it happens a lot in tv networks for a tv series or whatever it may be right a new executive will come in um for a channel and then um that new executive will scrap whatever show that our previous executive brought onto the um, channel because they want to um kind of you know write their own legacy but I never thought that was a good. I never, thought, I never kind of bought into that kind of idea because, if anything, um, ensuring that a show continues and is successful for years on, uh, regardless of the managerial changes, is probably more of a credit. It's probably more of a pat on the back for the executives that comes in because everyone knows it's hard to kind of continue consistently have a show that does well. But you know. There's, there's always that tendency with managers to come in and just kind of make their changes because they want to, you know, leave their stamp on things. It always fucks up that way. But it's just funny like, hearing this kid speak and saying that he was loyal to Walmart, which is kind of the thing that is this, that kind of breaks my heart about these kind of draws the people as well, is that they always, always, always buy in. More. They always buy. I think entry-level people buy in because uh, I've been that person myself. We buy into the dream more than anyone. We're probably more passionate than anyone that's in that company, which is why sometimes entry level people, when they get overlooked for um, head office jobs, it always breaks your heart because you're like, for sure, you care more than a person that has a job. You will put in more hours. You'll give your everything for the role. But sometimes that over eagerness, that willingness to do whatever it takes in order to kind of get the job done, especially for the person that's working in the office and just, you know, like I mentioned previously, is getting their job done within the first four hours. They don't want that kind of energy around them because you're going to show them up. They'd much rather you just, you know, stay in the shop floor or stay out of reach within the, within the head office. It's, you know, it's fucking annoying. It's really, it's really, really frustrating, but you can understand why that kind of thing happens happens um but yeah being loyal to walmart is crazy it's like trying to be loyal to tesco you're not loyal they're not loyal to you that uniform it, as long as you fit in that uniform anyone gets a job the moment you walk out in it someone else walks straight back in they have they must have like a imagine what the waiting list is for um an entry can you know just being a uh what do you call it a shelf packer at tesco especially nowadays with how hard it is to get jobs or how it is to you know i don't know to kind of make that next step up or get a bit of money in your pocket it's not, you know, they're not loyal to anyone. If anything, they're probably doing you a favor by giving you a job. But I can, I can appreciate the passion. And also, one thing I can appreciate is that when a job starts getting shitty and you're not liking it, you leave. 
You don't sit there and complain and bitch and whine like a little baby. You pack up your bags like a big girl and you walk across the road and you go somewhere else. Doesn't matter if you haven't got a job for a while. Doesn't matter if you're going to be scared about having money. If it angers you that much. Because I've never I've never really understood people that can go to bed, right? Go to bed pissed off because they're working in a row and they're fine with it. Like, oh, and I'm just going to go to bed and, you know, have this. Or wake up in the morning and, you know, be dreading the day that they're going to have to go into work. Or, or you know, you're on holiday and you're already fucking dreading having to go back and all this shit. Like, that would drain me. That's a not... I, I can't even go to bed angry after having an argument, right? I have to kind of squash me before I go to bed because it's going to kind of play on my mind. I don't want to have those thoughts in my head in general, right? So imagine being at work every single day hating it. Nah, man, just leave. Just leave. Leave it. Obviously, leaving out that kid's probably not the best thing to do because, you know, you're not... You're not going to have the hallowed reference, which I've never got as well. Fuck a reference. Who cares? Just put your mate's name on it and he can do it for you. But, um, and don't, again, that's not advice. I'm just saying, I'm just saying what I saw on the internet. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if it's not, if it's something that you're not enjoying at the moment, just go, man. Pick up your bags and leave. There's always other places that you can go and get employed at. You know, it's not really not that serious.